Hi, I'm Brian. I'd like to give you a walkthrough of the CrashPlan Admin Console. The Admin Console is a place where you can manage and monitor your CrashPlan backups. It has a lot of different parts. Let's take a look. What you see in the console will depend on your user roles. I'm going to show you what can be seen by the Customer Cloud Admin role for an Enterprise account. This is basically a sysadmin role for a CrashPlan Enterprise tenant in our cloud. But if you have other roles or a different account type, various parts of the console may not be visible. This initial landing page is one of those that may or may not show up depending on your role. This is the Dashboards page, and it gives an overview of how your backups are doing. We'll talk about how to get back to this page once you navigate off of it in a bit. Let's start out talking about how you move between the different parts of your console. At the top of your window, you should see Administration with an arrow next to it. If you mouse over this, it will show you the various parts of the admin console you have access to, separated under various headings. Clicking on any of them will take you to that page. Below the Administration navbar, there's another navbar that has all of the options from the current heading, allowing you to move between them without going back to the Administration navbar. To the right of these is a search box you can use to find a specific organization, user, or device that you're looking for. Type in a name and you'll be shown the various entities that match it. You may also see legal hold at the top next to administration if you have the appropriate licenses. We won't go over that section in depth, but know that this is where you'd access your legal hold management pages. To the far right, on the top level, you will find the user action menu. Clicking this allows you to quickly see and access the user that is signed in, adjust the language, and sign out if needed. On some pages, next to this user action menu, you'd see a question mark inside a circle. That symbol will link to a support article for the page you are viewing. Let's go through the various pages you can access from the Administration Nav menu. We'll start by looking at Organizations. The Organizations page is where you can see all of the organizations you have access to. From now on, I'll generally refer to these with the shortened form, Org. They're tiered, as some exist under others, to allow groups of orgs to have the same default settings. If you click on an org from your list, you're taken to the Org Detail page. Here you can see the number of child orgs, users, devices, and restores, as well as the amount of data and cold storage for your org. Clicking on any of these numbers will take you to a list of the items they represent. You can also see graphs of the data stored and a list of the settings for this org at the bottom. If you click on the action menu in the upper right, you're shown the various actions you can take on this org. Edit allows you to change the settings you could see on the org detail page. Device Backup Defaults lets you modify the default settings for any new device created in this org. Let's take a look at those now. There are several categories of settings you can set for your devices. We won't go through them, but know that you can click on the tabs at the top to look at the different categories. On the General tab, there's a checkbox for Use Device Defaults from Parent. If this is checked, the devices in this org will take the defaults set on a higher level org. If you want to set different settings for this org, you'll need to uncheck it. To the right of the settings, you can see a lock symbol. If that symbol is in the locked position, the setting cannot be changed. You'll need to unlock it as an admin in order for the setting to be modified. Clicking the button will toggle between locked and unlocked. When you lock a setting, that setting is pushed to all the devices in an organization, ensuring that they all have that locked setting. Let's close the device backup defaults and take a look at the users page. This page shows you all of the users in your environment. By default, you're looking at the active ones, but you can choose to look at deactivated or invited users. Hopefully there aren't any in the invited list, as those have not yet accepted an emailed invitation to join CrashPlan, so they won't be backing up. I'd recommend against using the invite option to add users, since they can become stuck if they don't see the email. If you clicked on the number under users when looking at an org, rather than going to the users page from the navbar, you'll only see the users from that org and its children. You can add users using the add user button, though it would be best to do this when only looking looking at the org you want to add the user to, so you don't have to then move the user. You can also export your list of users from the action menu. Clicking on any of the users will take you to their user detail page. On the user detail page, you can see the devices that belong to a user, how much data they have stored, and what roles they have. If you click on the name of a device, it will take you to that device's detail page. We'll look at one of those in a moment. From the action menu, you can edit the user's account settings, change what type of devices are shown, as well as moving or deactivating a user. Now let's take a look at the Devices page. This page shows you the devices in your environment. Again, if you clicked on the number under Devices in a specific org, you'll only see the devices for that org and its children. You can choose to show active or deactivated devices, or to show only the ones that have backup alerts. There's an Add Device button, but that really only redirects you to the Downloads page that we'll discuss in a bit. There's no real functionality here. As with users, you can also export the list of devices from the Action menu. 
Clicking on a device in the list will take you to its device detail page. From this page, you can see information about your device, how much data it has stored, and what its settings are. The action menu allows you to make changes to the settings, if the settings are unlocked on the org level, and take various actions to control the device and its backup. The support access page allows you to turn on and off the ability for crash plan engineers to create a user in your environment to assist with troubleshooting. If this is turned on, you will get a notification anytime one of those users is created. The key store page shows the status of the key store holding your crash plan account keys. By default, this is managed by crash plan, so this is only really useful if you have set up your own vault instance to hold your keys. The action menu in the upper right allows you to migrate and manage the key store if you have chosen to do it yourself. If you don't have a business requirement that you hold your own keys, I'd strongly recommend just letting crash plan manage them. That's all the pages under the environment heading. Next, we'll look at the client management section. The downloads page is where you can access the installers for the current version of the Crash Plan app. Click on the button on the right hand side for the desired version and OS to download the app. The deployment and customizations pages let you set up deployment policies that govern how devices are added and customize the Crash Plan app, respectively. The updates page lets you choose how long to delay app versions after they are released. These pages are more advanced than we can cover in this overview, so let's move on to the items under the status heading. The first item here is the dashboard screen that loads when you first log into Crash Plan. Again, this may not be the case for all user roles and accounts. If you don't see this option, don't worry. The license plan page shows you your current product plan, how many licenses are in use, and when they will expire. You can use this information for troubleshooting and future planning. The audit log tracks events that have occurred within the crash plan environment in the last 90 days. If you click the arrow next to any event, you'll see more detailed information about it. At the top, you can also access filters that allow you to filter by user or user type, event type, date, and more. The export button allows you to download all the data in the log. The reporting page allows you to run reports on the device, user, or organization level. Select the options you want, then click on Run Report. There are lots of different options here, so feel free to play around with it and see what sorts of information you are able to pull with these reports. Once you've run a report, you'll have the option to export the data in the same way as with the audit log. The last heading in the administration nav menu is integrations. The first page you'll see under the integrations heading is API clients. This isn't something that is used in most cases, if you even have access to it, but it can be useful if you want to run API commands via script or automation. An API client is like a user, but they get granted very specific permissions and can be reset at any time. Using an API client means that no user credentials are exposed. We won't go into more detail, but know that this is where you can manage those, and you can find more information on our support website. The other page under Integrations is Identity Management. Here's where you can add and manage identity providers such as Okta or Entra ID to handle authentication or provisioning of your users into Crash Plan. This simplifies managing your users on a large scale, and if you have access to an identity provider, it's worth looking into. We have step-by-step -step instructions on how to add these for a number of different providers, on our support site. The last part of the admin console that I want to show you is the command line interface. You can access this by pressing Control shift x from anywhere in the CrashPlan admin console. This window allows you to issue commands to the CrashPlan server or to a specific CrashPlan device if it is currently online. The commands you can use are detailed on the support site in two articles, one for the admin console and one for the client app. This isn't a feature that is used too frequently, but there are a couple of commands in there that might save you some time over manually managing things via the console and client UI. And this also allows you to send commands to the client without having direct access to it. That's the CrashPlan Admin Console. There are lots of useful tools there that will help you keep an eye on your backups and make sure they're working as expected. If you have further questions, feel free to reach out to our support team. We're always happy to help.